Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Judy Calvales, and I'm the creator of the Sacred Skulls. And this is my first video on YouTube, so I hope you'll enjoy it and make it better every time and try my best. So this is what I do here. If you're not familiar with it, this is um, some little artifacts that I, it takes me a few years to make them sometime. You know, it could be six years to two years. And um, I'm going to start first to show you a little bit at a time. There we go. This is Mammoth Ivory. I'm going to show you another one and then I'll go into details, like step by step. This is a piece in progress. That's another piece in progress. And then very quick, like another one. And then be patient, I'm going to go in detail about the meaning, the materials, and the process and what I do. And if you bear with me, I'll make some more videos where I'll walk and explain you how I do it. And what's magic with them is that they're all secret stash box. And I'm not going to show you how to open them and I'll show you, I'll show you how they are when they're open. All of them. That's a secret. And they are ultra secret stash box. It means like there's no way you'll find. So I carve them with the Dremel, with like jewelry tools. And um, you know, I use like a, basically what I use is a Fordham. And so basic jewelry tools, you know, and I will carve like the base, you know, and this is, for instance, this is like a, this is a mammoth ivory and it's sourced in um, Alaska. Uh, now, unfortunately, it's, um, it's banned in California due to very uh, bad Chinese business, you know. They still, um, they still apparently like sell some elephant ivory and uh, make it go for mammoth ivory. So now they decided to just don't even play with that. But yeah, this piece is uh, it's been two and a half years in the work. It's made of mammoth ivory, like I said, some 18 karat gold, some platinum, Australian diamond, session parasite meteorite on the top, and you got some uh, paddock wood on the side. Like ancient gears on the side here too. Different type of gold teeth. And I like to play with different type of gold. Like, you know, I'll do like some 18 carat with 22 carat, 24 carat. And then it would change slightly the color and the, and the texture. So that's pretty, pretty good. This piece is made out of like Bolivian rosewood. The base is Bolivian rosewood, and then you got like some 22 karat gold and 24 karat gold. You got like um, some mammoth ivory in white, and then the Peruvian turquoise in blue. Uh, it's called Chrysocolla. And then you got a champagne diamond from Australia. Some Lido Coatite. Uh, tourmaline if I remember sometimes I don't remember again mammoth ivory there we got like some euclase from Colombia very rare stone that is found with um, it grows with uh, with emerald but it's way more rare very pricey and then we got like a fire I guess from the Slaughter Mountain Arizona Let me show you one of my uh, semi-production pieces and sometimes I have some of those, you know, it's... So what I forgot to mention is I'm a tattooer mainly. I own a tattoo studio in Nevada City um, and that's where I work, you know, five days a week. I do tattoos and at night I will work on my skulls. So that's why they're very rare too. Take some time. So 
this is one of my production pieces, which they are still very rare, you know, it's not like you can I bust out every week, you know, it's like once in a great while I can have one of those. But what I mean with production piece is that I will um, carve the, the base and all the component in wax and I will do a use a loss wax technique, you know, and, and then I can duplicate and so I have the base, you know, and have different things and then build them like that. But they still take a long time, you know. And here the, the base is um, is uh, brass and then you got sterling silver, you got some 22 karat gold, copper. You see the, the shiny uh, little piece of glass that you see is actually crystal, it's a slice of quartz crystal. And um, this is called the Pleiadian. This one comes like with a chain that's got the, all the Fibonacci sequence and the golden mean on it with a nice key. I'll show you how it open too. And the top, um, the red wood that you see here is paddock. So it's an African wood, very dense, beautiful, bright orange when you first uh, cut it and carve it. And then it, um, it turned into a dark red, which is uh, one of my, my favorite color to put in the skulls, you know. So I've been doing those since 2007 and I, you know, I traveled for about 10 years. You know, I used to live in India at some point. That's where I learned how to tattoo. And um, I was always fascinated with ancient artifact. And a um, little bit of story, you know, for you to know where this comes from, you know. Um, when I first started carving them, basically, uh, I was in India in a city called Pushkar. It's a beautiful, like, Aladdin-style city, you know. Uh, all blue, like lime blue walls, or white blue walls, you know with a sacred lake um, um, over there and, and it's, it's really magical and I was wonky, walking one day you know in the, the in the bazaar where you see cars like people like everything is crazy bike motorcycle bing, bing, bing. the smells of incense and shit at the same time and uh, as I was walking and noticed this guy that was uh, that, that was coming towards me and he had a pendant of a Buddha I couldn't really see what it was, but I could see that he was born. And uh, as I saw him passing by, I was like, wow, this is really amazing. And I thought like, wow, I should like really try to carve something. And I, I've never done that before. Um, I didn't even tattoo at that time. I was just like a young guy, 23 year old, my first trip in India. The first time I took the plane, you know. Uh, pretty amazed by everything I would see and pretty scared too. But anyway, a couple of days later, we decided to go to uh, the desert, you know, and do a camel trip with a friend. And uh, as I stopped to pee, I noticed this uh, this jaw, this bone jaw from a cow that was sticking out of the sand. And that's it. I thought, like, I'll take it, you know, and I started, I'll, I'll see what I do. And eventually, I carved it with a knife. I had a leather man. And I carved a face that was pretty similar to that one. You know, so I carved a face like that, it was a little more like flattened, you know. And I made a, a design on a piece of paper of an helmet. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I can make a helmet, you know, around the face in paper. And if I bring it to the a jeweler, it could uh, make, uh, make it in silver. And so that's it, I went to the jeweler there, like in a little place, you know, it was all open with a cow like sleeping on the side there. Uh, you know, kind of a palm tree here, like a couple of dogs, sand on the floor. And the guy was there, uh, you know, like sitting down doing his stuff. And I, and I asked him, you know, to do the helmet. And eventually I stayed with him. I think it was like just one day to do it the entire afternoon. And that was my real first lesson of jewelry, basically just by observing. Um, I asked him to put a little diamond in the forehead, you know, and, you know, a nice chain. And I had carried that on a pendant. Uh, for my next six months traveling in India. And the crazy thing is like everywhere I will go, people will stop me to ask me what it was. 
which gave me a lot of confidence. I was like, wow, people are really amazed by this thing. So that was my first really like carving things, you know, and then eventually here and there I would carve something else and carve another head. And until 2007 when I went to Mexico and there I was like, I'm going to make a box, you know, a secret box. And that took me many years to uh, make it look real good and make it like super efficient proof. And I got inspired by things I will see, other people, other technicians. And, you know, combine all those techniques, all this inspiration from traveling all over. And, uh, and I made my own thing. Um, and there we go, you know, like almost 10 years later. This is where I'm at right now. And uh, thanks for watching this video. You know, I'll do more. And um, I hope you like it. And I'm open to, uh, I'm open to feedback. Uh, how I could do it better, you know, I know there's a lighting, there's a couple of things, but I'm, I'm pretty passionate, you know, about this and uh, um, I'll explain you why I do this too, like the deeper meaning, I'll explain you some techniques and things like that. So yeah, again, my name is Judicale Valles and I go by Sacred Skulls or Judicale Sacred Skulls on Instagram, follow me, um, also subscribe and we'll see how it goes. Thank you so much.